Good morning and a warm welcome to you all. My name is Caroline Monaghan and I manage the Radleyan Society based here at the College. We're currently broadcasting live from the top of Mansion, bringing you the next in a series of our virtual archives events, this time focused on covered passage through the ages. In the history of the school, covered passage has been the stage for much more than simply coming and going. Its history includes running races, pony rides, postal services, museum displays and more. And of course, it is the perennial home of school notices, some more official than others. This year, to commemorate our 175th anniversary, we've developed a graphic timeline of the history of our college, which will be installed in Covered Passage later this year. Claire Sargent will share some of the early design work of it with, uh, on this with you today. But before we go on to that, just a few housekeeping items before we begin. So please keep your microphones on mute, just to avoid uh, noise distraction when Claire's talking. We do want this to be a very interactive session but we also need a little bit of crowd control. So if you want to ask a question, you can either post something onto the chat function or you can put your hand up virtually or you can just put your hand up and we'll look out for you and we'll direct the question to Claire um, when she's finished speaking. Um, I also need to let you know that the event will be recorded just for use on our website so that those who wanted to come today and couldn't can still take a look and, um, and enjoy the event. So without further ado, I'm delighted to be able to produce introduce Claire Sargent, our archivist. Claire's worked at Radley for over 25 years, as well as being our archivist, she's also a classics don. She is expert on all things Radley, and we are really looking forward to hearing her perspectives today. So over to you, Claire. Hello, thank you, Caroline. Uh, I would say, given the uh, uh, dis a distinguished company who are with us today, that I am in any way the expert on Radley or on Covered Passage. So what I'm hoping for very much is that I'm just going to introduce some images and some ideas. And what we'd really like is for you to just sort of chip in and talk to us about your experience of Covered Passage. And as Caroline said, one of the things that we're doing is um, creating a new timeline. This has arisen out of the work that's been done from Untold Stories. Um, which I'm sure you've all read. Uh, I had a lovely letter from New Zealand yesterday from one of our oldest members, uh, from Brian Roper, who's well into his 90s now, about how much he'd enjoyed it and the fact that he has a photograph on page 70, which he'll now be showing to everybody in New Zealand. So that's a really nice thing. And out of that, we, we've, uh, because we've done so much research and we've done so much work on timelines and so on, it was time to redecorate Covered Passage, which was last done for the 150th anniversary. But you can also see from what's uh, up on the screen there, it goes back a very long way. This is, the earliest photo that we have of it, which is from uh, the 1890s, is by Henry Taunt. And one of the things that uh, was a, a key aspect of it, you've got the notice boards you can see there on the left, and you've got those open um, floorboards, which were described in the 1890s and actually through into the 1910s when it was replaced with the first version of a wooden block floor, that it was absolutely freezing cold, rat riddled, a horrendous place to be in the vacations or in the dark, and we might view what it's like to be there in the dark at the moment a little later on. Uh, but it started life as an open cloister, open to the side, and then was closed in with a, a roof. And certainly one of the earliest feats that we have of it, which I was really pleased that um, Sophie Torrance has uh, researched for coming out in the next Old Radleyan is that sometime in the 1850s, Walter Woodgates, the great, uh, the great rower, who we now have the Woodgate skulls for, um, achieved a feat which I do not think has been achieved since. Cover passage is 80 yards long, and he, in the course of one hour, ran up and down it 100 times, so that's 800 yards in an hour, which is not far, whilst eating two pots of jam. I don't think that's been done since. I'm not entirely sure we want to emulate it or try to see if we can break his record. But I do know also that we have a wonderful description when uh, Oswald Reed came back uh, from Mesopotamia with his Victoria Cross. 
um, the boys carried him on their shoulders up and down covered passage cheering him which was actually recreated in the shell play this year where they they studied the lives of four old Bradleyans and one of them what was to re recreate on stage that carrying of Oswald Reed up and down covered passage so it's been this iconic place for us for quite a long time well pretty much the whole of our history those wooden slats were changed, first of all, in 1910 into a block wood floor. And then the block wood floor was replaced again in 1947 for the visit of Princess Elizabeth, so that it was comfortable on the royal feet. I know when she came in 1997, we also were concerned about her comfort. And at that point, what was called the Royal Loo was created in Mansion, which was beautifully fitted out wonderful cushions, you always need a cushion in a loo, and great embroidered curtains, which I think have all now gone. But at that stage, we were always concerned about the comfort of royalty. So covered passage was one of those things. And here it is today. This is our blank canvas. Covered passage has just been decorated in the last, uh, over the summer uh, and part of last term. What we're going to have is along the window side work always by the shells so this year for the 175th we have a series of uh, group paintings collaborative paintings where they selected a number of inspirational old radlians and so you can see there ted dexter with his no ball games picture there was also Dennis Price. We've got Tom Shakespeare, who I know is uh, talking at the um, uh, on Thursday to us all. Um, people like um, who else is there? Peter Wildblood, the uh, gay rights campaigner, and so on. So they picked out a real array of people, including our three uh, bronze-winning Olympians from the Tokyo Olympics. And here on the other side is our blank canvas. Now we've been all over the place with the design for this. And what we're aiming for is a timeline of Bradley events, photographs, um, sketches, all sorts of things that just give us 175 years of the school's history. At the moment, this is the mock-up of how that is going to look. And you can see some of the people that we're picking out, some of the things which are important. Uh, the visit of uh, Montgomery uh, in 1947, when he described the Battle of Al Alamein uh, to the school. And one of the great things that he did then, of course, was to, to sign the drum. Uh, and I know that the CCF group have been looking for that drum. He also drew up the Battle of Al Alamein on, um, on a whiteboard or on, on a blackboard. Uh, with chalk, um, standing there on the, uh, uh, what are we saying, on, on the terrace at the mansion. Um, and I believe that somebody recently found that blackboard or a blackboard of that kind of talk that he gave somewhere in the basement of the Imperial War Museum. But what he also gave us, and we've just uh, in the last year been using for teaching, is his own signed copies of his descriptions of Alamein and so on. So those he gave in 1947, and we're still using them for teaching and inspirational teaching for the boys. But what we also have, um, we'll be able to put up for the first time a letter from Princess Elizabeth that was written after she'd had tea with the prefects in 1947, where she actually says how much nicer it was to sit there and have tea as a as a 21 year old. Um, much nicer to have tea with the prefects than all the boring things she usually had to do. And then we've got staff, people might well remember Mile Aritsina, the gardener, uh, who fled communist, uh, communist Yugoslavia, made his home here and was our gardener for more than 50 years. Things like Peter Cook and the Private Eye and the Marionettes, uh, Peter Wildblood, already mentioned. And this great series of photos of um, 
the first one was taken in 1869 of boys draped around a gate. This is the 1969 version of it around a gate. And we, recon uh, we redid it in 2022. We had to go all over school to try and find a gate we could drape boys over. And there they are again in 2022. Just that continuity of life. We've got Dennis Silk. We've got the JCR and so on. So that's kind of the design. And if anybody is feeling that they, they have a question or they want to chip in at any point, one of the key things that I was thinking about when I first put this together, this is the original mock-up of it. What I'm thinking about, we've got Montgomery of Alamein, we've got Jean Body came as the, the school nurse, but also how events in, in the world affected um, the school. So you know, things like the foundation of the NHS in 1948, did that make a difference to you? Uh, Bert Robinson, who came in 1949 as our cricket pro. Um, relay we'd talked about the Korean War and John Firth, who was killed in active service on his national service. And a lot of you I know uh, did national service uh, up, right up until 1960. But then those sort of quiet things that happened, things like 1951, O and A levels replaced the school certificate and suddenly you have a whole different way of teaching. Or in 1953, the dis discovery of the three-dimensional structure of DNA, which changes our whole way of thinking about science and about biology. And really simple things like rationing ending in the UK in 1954. So we go back to that picture, which we will be putting up of the uh, prefects, the box of chocolates that the prefects gave to Princess Elizabeth in 1947, which actually is clubbed together from their chocolate ration, their sweet ration, so that they can give her a gift. So these are the kind of things that we're picking out. Marionette Society, Peter Cook's The Impact. And things like radio broadcasting from uh, the Whitson service from Chapel, which you can now hear online. Dennis Silk, the JCR, which is one of those great moments. Um, and there's that 1969 photo in depth. Was any one of you part of that? So is there anyone who's there who is ready to chip in with a question? Cassie, is there anything on, on the chat or? Everybody just listening. Sorry, uh, no, I was just I was just having a little read. I think there's a little bit of contention around the um, the notices uh, that are no longer there up in covered passage um, yeah. because of the timeline going in. Um, uh, my understanding uh, and from what I've seen is that they, in this digital age, people weren't really using them at all anymore. They mm. were just blank. So um, I don't know if you wanted to add to that, but that's that's my understanding. So they were a bit extinct, unfortunately. Yes, there were, there were two things that have become extinct. Um, one is the uh, one is the notices, and, and basically what we were finding was that something would go up, and two years later it was still there, um, and people were just not using them. There is still right at the far end, just as you come out of hall, um, there is a today board which will still be there with with today's notices on it. But even with hall, we now actually have two entrances. Uh, and, and exit. So half the school are going out the other way. So it's covered passage was changing in its nature from being that central marketplace into becoming um, uh, into becoming just a thoroughfare which wasn't that same central place. So we've, we, uh, yes, it is, it is a problem. What do we do about the notices? Let's go on. And Claire, there is a hand up from Stephen Carey. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, Stephen. Yeah, just a kind of general comment there. I think use of black and white photographs obviously creates a very kind of austere atmosphere. I think obviously, mind you, I think in 1973 things were quite austere when I started. I remember the sub warden, um, Croson, just seemed like quite an austere character, quite formal, you know. So I think obviously. You know, circumstances have changed, but the use of black and white photography, I think, also creates an atmosphere perhaps more austere than it would normally perhaps 
be? I, I don't know, but it's, it's fascinating. Just a comment. Thank you. Uh, well, it obviously the um, the black and white photographs um, are there because they're the older ones. But you can see, actually, if you just look at the JCR, what we have, we don't have a color photo of JCR in 1970, but we do have color photograph of it in 2022. So as it goes across time, it will become much brighter and lighter. Uh, what we're also looking at is, is, is that some of these photographs will actually be framed. So again, if I go back to it, uh, what we're looking at is, is to give it a, a three-dimensional effect. So that actually the wall itself will, it, it won't simply be an austere black and white um, corridor. Uh, it, it will have pops of color throughout it. Um, there's a, just a comment about the spelling of wild blood being incorrect and some of the dates being incorrect on your draft version of the um, of the timeline, Claire. Yes. Just to say that we uh, the actual timeline will be 100% pre-pred and everything will be correct on it. But thanks for those uh, for pointing those things out for us. Yes, yeah. I, 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 I picked up the wild blood, um, the wild blood error uh, a, a while back, um, and there are all sorts of things. This, this is a very um, this is a very early. Um, uh, draft that we're looking at here, just something to sort of see what would happen if we if we did this. Um, so yes, I mean, uh, we've got here this lovely uh, painting of cricket by Barrow, um, which is from the 1880s. And obviously, that's against 1948 for Ted Dexter and so on. So yes, it's this is a work in progress, we will be changing an awful lot of things on it. But when you actually see the whole thing, I can guarantee it will be proofread, it will be um, much more rigorously done than this, this original. Uh, now a little question actually, Claire, when did surpluses come in and go out? Surpluses? Yes. Well, well we've, we've always had surpluses, at least um, we've got photographs of surpluses in the 1890s um, at the move between um, the old chapel and the new chapel. There's a, a lovely picture of um, uh, the choir because they were at the time they were having services for uh, and walking from um, the old gym. So that's a great photo which shows them all in surpluses and they still are in surpluses. Uh, one of the things they've just asked me actually is, is that they've been tidying out the vestry and uh, we have one or two historic surpluses which have come into the archive. We have very few garments, I must say, in the collection. Um, and I'm not that, we're not really geared up to look after garments, but when we do have something of, of that, um, that importance, like the change to a, a surplus style, which you wouldn't think is something that changes, um, we have, um, we, we do keep them. So the surpluses are kept. I actually have another, just another couple of uh, comments. I thought the JCR opened in 1969, a nice story. And before I left at the end of the winter term, I remember being covered in brick dust, scrubbing down the vaulted <laughs> ceiling with a wire brush. And when it was all done, having a beer there with warden silk, fantastic memory there. Um, and uh, uh, Stephen says he assumes gowns are still worn. Yes, they are, I can assure you they are. Oh, gowns are still worn, yes. <laughs> and used by boys to mop up milk and jam at dinner. Absolutely, um, yes. Good. I, I, I always feel with the self-service too. Claire, I believe you're on mute. How long have I been on mute? Hours. Right. So right at the end of it, you'll all remember the room at the far end. This is um, this was the sixth form. It's now the this is a note written by A. K. Boyd in 1947 when he was actually annotating a, a, a photo album. So that space right at the end, which is now a sort of entrance room, was at one stage um, the sixth form classroom. And you can see it's got panelling on there. Then we've got a couple of evocative shots. 
all the way down, you'll all remember what this is like. And the elections. So right at the far end, we've got that room set up as I think at that point it was a careers room. There are the boys in their gowns still in the, I think this is the early 2000s. So still that central place where you come to do things. And going right back, this is something that was being discussed as to whether we might do this. This is actually in cloisters, obviously, um, not cover passage itself. Uh, this is the museum, which was started by the Natural History Society and contains all sorts of things. I mean, recently in biology, they discovered um, an ichthyosaur fossil in a cupboard, uh, which goes right the way back to this. But there is now a, a display in the biology department, which includes a lot of um, things which came from this museum. And the geology department are using quite a lot of the, uh, of the rocks and fossils from it still for teaching. So one of the questions that we had was, should we, instead of a timeline, should we actually put up a museum display along the passageway? And what we're thinking of is that what we might do in, is to have a small display in Stone Hall, uh, which can be constantly changed and we can actually then sort of bring things out, which would be nice to see. But a static display, I kind of feel that after a while you stop looking at it and you don't see it. And that actually is one of the issues that we have with the timeline. And we're designing that in panels so that if we want to change it or add to it, we can just take something down, update it and so on. So you were asking about the notice boards. This is how Cover Passage looked just a couple of years ago. Well, it's really exciting um, painter style in, in pink rag. And you can see the state of the notices. But I know one of the key things about Cover Passage was the, um, the letters page. And I'm really, really sad that the letters were never kept. I know Hamish has talked about those at length. So is anybody on screen or, or, or with us at the moment who actually wrote a letter, read a letter, was impressed by a letter? Now there is no public mechanism for the boys to make that sort of statement. In the Hugh, way um, Hugh's speak. putting his hand up, Claire. Yep. You're on mute. Here you're on mute. Can we unmute him? Right. Can you hear me? Yes. Right. You can hear me. Hugh Hudson here, 1951. Very nice, <clears throat> Claire, of this this presentation, and that the picture you've got at the moment is one which, of course, I remember from the 1950s. All lots of notice boards put up different categories of uh, sports mm -hmm. and uh, classrooms and sixth form and societies and clubs. E everyone put notices up there. What I remember in particular, two events. <clears throat> One was, I think, from about 1953. David Goldsmith, then a junior master, <clears throat> put up a little handwritten notice one afternoon saying, Roger Bannister has broken the four minute mile at nearby Ifley Road, uh, in Oxford. <clears throat> that was a historic event, four minute mile, the late Roger Bannister, who became head of an Oxford College or Cambridge College, and he broke the four minute re mile record, which was a, a world shaking event in those days. Now, of course, uh, many people have <laughs> probably run faster than that. The other event, which I remember, you, you mentioned letters, I don't remember letters as such. But another then junior master, DTM Burke, Scotty Burks, taught French and German <clears throat> to me as well, put up a little handwritten notice saying a German family uh, would like to make an exchange with an English boy. And uh, I saw this and I was just learning German at the time and French. Uh, and I mentioned, happened to mention it to my, to my mother next time I spoke to her or wrote. And she cottoned onto that like anything, and we arranged uh, an exchange visit, which was extremely successful. And I'm still in touch with that family, what, 50, 60 years later. 
and uh, I have two younger sisters and the boy Jens had three younger sisters. So we exchanged from 1953 for the next several years uh, coming and going, which was quite an event so soon after the Second World War. And uh, it, it made my life, uh, improved my German, improved my self-confidence. And uh, that was one small event of covered passage for me, over. And and Hugh, did you did you keep um, did you keep up with them? As after I you said, left yes, still in touch, still in touch. That oh, was excellent. 19, that was nineteen fifty three. It's now twenty twenty two. So uh, nearly seventy years later, I'm yes. still in touch. Uh, we're all still alive and kicking. <laughs> that that is excellent. That's an excellent story. Um, actually, Claire, we've got a couple of um, amusing stories um, mm -hmm. while we're here. Um, apparently, there was a Don's Austin 7 car was put in the classroom in classroom number 18 at the end of the summer term 1954. Nobody's kind of really sure how they managed to get it in there. And then put on bricks in Memarch was uh, Ken Brookman's car in the late 50s. So there's a lot of car talk um, <laughs> here. And also a note that uh, Roger Bannister was master of Pembroke, Oxford. That's right. Excellent. Uh, I, re I remember in Cambridge there was quite a discussion about a double decker bus, which I think was got into Trinity Great Court. And the porters could not get it out. It was larger than the main gate. They couldn't work out how to do it. And in the end, they dismantled the bus. And eventually somebody put a note through the Porter's Lodge and said, why didn't you let the tires down like we did? <laughs> so there are ways of doing it. I, I also do recall uh, in classics, um, the McChesneys, who, who was, he was F social tutor, uh, kept chickens, which used to roam around in front of the mansion. And one boy managed to smuggle one of the chickens under his gown into uh, a classics lesson with Ian Campbell. Um, and halfway through the lesson, Ian turned back from the whiteboard to his class to find the chicken sitting on his desk. And they had no, he had no idea how they'd got it, how long the boy had had a chicken under his gown through the entire lesson, waiting for that moment. And also in terms of notices, of course, Cover Passage had the most momentous, one of the most momentous notices ever written in, uh, in Radley, which was in 1914 when Warden Selwyn, uh, Gordon Selwyn, stuck up the notice that said rugby will be played. That was it. Rugby became the school sport, just on a notice in Covered Passage. Uh, and they then spent the next 20 years arguing about it. And um, A.K. Boyd actually really gave him a hard time in his history because of that notice about rugby, because he'd, he'd been a football player, a soccer player. So we've got the notices. What we've also got to one side here um, is the entrance to pub study. Now, I was asked in an email before this about does pub study still exist? Uh, and I have to say, no. Uh, as the senior management team have expanded, they have been looking for studies and so uh, and, and private offices where they can all work. And there was one silent coup one holiday. It must have been a summer holiday. And I think, I think it was Charlie Barker, a senior master, simply took over pub study. Um, so that has not existed for quite a while. I don't know what the pubs do, whether they actually do meet in um, just somewhere else, but they don't have that space. And I'm sure that a, a lot of you will have um, been involved in pub study as well and know it as a space where um, where they could go, they could be quiet, where the punishment books were kept. Um, a real uh, central place in the school there. So if you think about that as the um, as, as covered passage itself as that major hub coming all the way through, then suddenly you've got the, uh, the prefects based right at the heart of it. So what you've got is right at the end, um, what was big school, then pub study, then the dining hall, and then the chapel. 
all lined up along a long covered passage, those key places in the school. This is Angus McPhail actually enjoying himself. Um, I don't know when Angus did this, um, he said it was a, a chance in, in the day, in his day, to just sit there absolutely quietly and read a book or just to pray or whatever, just to contemplate. This is the amnesty cage. Uh, and I know that um, Dennis Silk was the first warden to sit in the amnesty cage. Uh, as I recall, it was it would go on for two or three days. A lot of members of the school would come and spend an hour, mostly an hour, sometimes two, right the way through in a in a twenty four hour vigil um, on behalf of Amnesty. Uh, outside of it, you've got people who are writing letters to Amnesty International, and I think um, the instigator of this was Charlie Millwood, who was on the National Council, I think. For, um, for Amnesty International at the time. So people would be writing uh, letters in support of prisoners of conscience around the world. And you had this symbolic cage just sitting there. And I can imagine that if you were on the stint at three in the morning in Covered Passage, just sitting there in the dark, in the cage with um, two guards outside, it, it, it's a very profound experience. I, I did it once. Um, and the sense of liberation of being within the cage and actually watching the people go past who were all too shy to look back at you. So you were looking, watching your guards who were embarrassed. You were watching the people walk past who were embarrassed that you were there. And you had that sort of a, a real liberation to actually do that, uh, which gave a different insight into a prisoner of conscience. But I have to say that obviously, if you are a real prisoner of conscience, um, or being tortured, being imprisoned, having no idea how long you're going to be there, it's not at all a liberating experience, but it was a very powerful one here. And see Angus as the warden just taking part in it. Is there anybody here who actually did take part in the, in the amnesty sitting at any stage? And um, there is a there is a, a note, um, a good spot actually, from uh, Neville saying there is another protester in the corner of this image that mm. I haven't actually spotted. It's true. Um, yes. While I'm here, just a couple of things. Um, a, a, a note here about remembering D T M Burke's French lessons conducted entirely in French, including Ouvrez la fenêtre, fenêtre yes. on freezing days. <laughs> yes. um, uh, a question which I'll come to. A, a note from Jock just saying that pub study used to have a television in it. Very nice. <laughs> um, a question around whether or not there are any photos of the boys lined up in covered passages and surfaces before Sunday services and I think Saints Day. So that's a question. Uh, so a few things there just chucked at right. you. Oh, hang on. Jock said pup study used to contain a television for use by the pups when TVs and other electronic goodies appeared in socials. Pup study was little used by the pups. Mm. So they, 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 I think this was um, I think this was uh, Charlie's feeling was that it, it wasn't any longer being used. This is part of the whole change in communications throughout the school. So as, as just as the notices have gone, so the pups getting together in one place to to chat or to have different, just slightly different privileges to the rest of the school um, has changed. There isn't, as far as I'm aware, any photograph. I've never seen a photograph of the whole school lined up um, and coming out of chapel. I, I was very aware of when, um, when I was working on World War One that one of the figures for the War Memorial Arch is that there are more than 230 names on the War Memorial, which is the equivalent to the whole, the entire school in any one year during that war. So when I was working on that, um, standing outside of chapel as the boys stream past, a very very powerful sense that this is this is the whole school walking past and if we were in world war one these would be the fallen this would be all those who had died in the war and so to that moment when we actually do see that's the only moment in the day where we see the whole school together is is streaming out of chapel 
which they still do. And it, it, that's a point. We do need at least one photo of that. We've never, we've never seen one. But one of the great things about it is that it's really, really a great place where we talked about Walter Woodgate running up and down it. This is the, um, the beginning of robotics in the school. This is the remote control car society who are using it as their, um, as their racetrack. Absolutely great, um, great photo that somebody took. And it's certainly at the society's fair. Um, Anthony Williams still runs the remote uh, model aircraft, remote control model aircraft society, and they fly them up and down covered passage at the, for the society's fair. What you also will meet now at a society's fair in, in covered passage is uh, Michael Noon's collection of reptiles and snakes. It's quite possible to meet a boy uh, wrapped in a python just walking down covered passage, just perfectly normal days. Uh, and there are moments of, of other people who have used it. Uh, when I first came, I was being told about um, Don's bachelor dinner parties, particularly the Christmas party. And you can do an awful lot with cushions and sledging and actually pretty much playing, as far as I can work out, playing curling with Don's on a cushion with a broom, just chasing each other up and down the passage. It's a really great thing for that. Certainly, uh, late night library duties, I, I very often come out and find e-social practicing either cricket or hockey. And these were one or two of the things that we had to take into consideration when we were talking about the timeline and redecorating the place, what should we do with it? Uh, and, and we decided in the end to keep the paneling, A, because it's difficult to take down and B, because it actually can cope with cricket and rugby and hockey. Um, and uh, I have to say that one or two of our maintenance uh, people did not appreciate that those things happened at midnight in Covered Passage. You need Claire, to be... James, sorry, Claire, yeah? but James Crawford said um, he remembers Chapel Q with the pups marching up and down, keeping mm. order before processing. 1964 until 1969, but it stopped when compulsory Sunday matins ended mm. around 68. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they don't. They don't. Um, they don't queue up now. They go in together, uh, in as they arrive, but um, they come out in a great long stream. And what you have uh, now are the um, the dons who've been to chapel service are, are are lined up along the wall, and it's a great moment for sort of grabbing a boy you want to talk to or grabbing a don that you want to talk to. Uh, and I have a bit, there have been times when there's a boy I've wanted to talk to, and I can see that he's making a point of being on the other side of the, co of the corridor, so that I've either got to bash my way through all of them to get to him, or um, he can just sort of pretend that uh, I didn't see her. How could I possibly have seen her in the crowd? So that is one of the things that they do all the time. Oh, go backwards. So the room right at the end. This is it between life. We saw it already as a sixth form room. And actually, I think the sixth form room is probably over here through the gates, the doors. Uh, but what many of you will remember that is, of course, is the Marionette, Marionettes Theatre. And, oops, oh no, I know I've got marionettes somewhere. I'll just scoop through, there we are. These you will remember. And uh, it's a great photograph of, of actually marionettes in action. Most of the photographs that I have for the marionettes are on slides, so I haven't yet been able to get them digitized. Um, I was sent quite a few a while back, and somebody recently sent me uh, this photograph of the Pirates of Penzance. Uh, this is probably the Yeoman of the Guard, I should think, being um, worked on here in 1958. But they were such a, a key part of the uh, of the life of the school. Um, and one of the things which is mentioned to me constantly is, is this is where the marionettes were. So again, have we got have we got people out there who are marionettes? It is, of course, where Peter Cook started. And I know that Michael Bawtry was going to join us. And one of the key uh, works there was uh, Black and White Blues. 
and I'm very pleased to say that Michael has recently uh, given me permission to um, get the recording of Black and White Blues digitised and put up on the uh, on the website. So we'll be working on that later in the year, and that'll become available for people to listen to. Every so often, uh, a copy of that record uh, emerges. Again. I have a question, Claire, around whether or not covered passage is still uh, waxed um, because it used to be very slippy. Um, and then uh, just a comment around how on the first evening of every term, we all assembled in big school for roll call, saying Adsum, as our name was called. Mm -hmm. There's a memory there. Um, and then the Marinette Theatre was also Richard Morgan's classroom for some mm -hmm. time. So a few things there. Yeah. Waxing, yes. Um, Inez, uh, who is the, the cleaner, uh, the, who currently looks after Covered Passage, waxes it at, at about certainly once a week in full. Every day it's uh, it's swept, every day it's uh, it's gone over with a kex mop to polish it. Um, I know there was uh, one cleaner at one stage who, who had the nickname of Sisyphus because it was the never ending task of keeping covered passage polished and clean. And, and a real, um, a really good thing about the classics teaching in the school that that could become the nickname for a cleaner, Sisyphus there. Um, so yes, it is looked after all the time. I, I must admit there, there was a, a, a cleaner a, a few years ago who managed to uh, clean a little bit of the end of cover passage down towards the library and a, a place many of you won't know about, which is the ladies' loos down there. And she polished the whole lot with furniture polish. So you could walk in there and find yourself just hanging off the doorknob uh, because your feet just went completely under you. But keeping it um, keeping it polished is, is essential if you're if you're going to play curling with dons or remote control cars with the boys, then you have to have a, a polished covered passage. Uh, oh, one of the oh, sorry, Claire, yeah. um, sorry to interrupt. Uh, question again. Will be hear me through the microphone. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, do boys other than the choir now wear surplices? And as just as a, a memory as well, the Marinette Theatre was also Paul Croson's classroom in the late fifties. Uh, but the question is about the choir and uh, whether or not um, whether or not boys more broadly wear surplices. No, only the choir. Uh, only the choir are in surplices, um, and they're, they're in surplices for most of the. Um, for most services, I think uh, any, any anything that the choir is singing on, they're, they're in a surplus. And I th I think I saw an advert earlier this term for a robe mistress or master, someone who could actually look after the choir robes and keep them in order. Just at the moment, the choir is over eighty strong, um, so it's an awful lot of work to make sure they've all they're all in surpluses and uh, neat and tidy. And the other thing that happened down at the end, uh, not in the marionettes room, but uh, just around the corner from there, was the paperback bookshop. Now I know, I think this was uh, Hamish Aird's um, invention, I'm not sure. And I think the boys who worked in the paperback bookshop, stocking it and uh, keeping records of it, actually some went into book selling and some went to possibly into publishing. Uh, this obviously is a, uh, publicity shot for the Radleyan, but certainly when I came, it was still a very popular part of the school, so where, where you could just get a book to read. And I, I, I think what killed it actually was Amazon. But uh, in part, we, we, we moved it out. Um, people just stopped going to bookshops to get the books that they wanted, they could get them delivered directly by Amazon. So it wasn't being used any longer. But that again, I think is something that many of you will remember because it was there certainly for 10, maybe 20 years, a long time that we had that paperback bookshop there. And this is that end room post marionettes, 
after it had become the careers library. And careers is one of those interesting things that sort of developed um, late 70s, early 80s. Obviously now it's a major part of the work of um, linked to the Radleyan Society. Uh, but actually somewhere where you had all of the university brochures, guidance and so on. I have a question from Hugh. Yeah. Hello, Hugh. Can you unmute, Hugh? Right, can you now hear me? Yes. All right, just a very brief comment on careers. You say it started in the 1970s. Well, I was there in the 1950s and there mm -hmm. was a master there called Ivor Gilliatt. Right, large yes. Char large yes. character cricket coach, sub-tutor of eSocial, Llewellyn Jones. He was the careers master. Uh -huh. Yes, and, he was, uh, that's true. Yes. What? Yes, yes, I, uh, you're reminding uh, me of that, that's true, yes. Well, I'm just uh, reminding myself because uh, um, he, he wasn't much help for me. I managed to, to get going without his help, but I know that he was quite good on certain connections, business and commerce and so on, how he had that I don't know, but I think a lot of people were helped initially uh, to, to, to think about a future career, whether going to university or not, etc. from Ivy Gilead. Mm. Yes, I think he was, um, uh, th thinking back, I think he was very much using the network connections that came from the Radleyan Society. Uh, but when I'm going through some of the older paperwork uh, of, of letters from old boys uh, after they've died and so on, there are, there are quite a lot of letters to and from Ivor Gilead about um, uh, placing people with companies uh, and so on. So yes, yes, careers did, uh, did go way back. Uh, what I'm thinking about here is, is where it became a, a more formal thing with, the, with a, a careers library and so on. So this is just a slightly different thing from that, that, um, that informal connection that Ivor Gilead was doing, but very much a, a, a case that we could probably go right the way back to the, the founding of the school and there would always have been connections made and advice given. Oh. And then I'm going to stop share for a moment and we'll come back into this. Is there we're, we're very nearly at the end here. Is there any other questions that have come through? Any chat that we haven't uh, picked up on? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, there was a question about gowns and whether or not they were cut down, but that was answered. They're washed um, and the dry cleaning charge was removed after a protest. Um, and the comment, have a Gilead placed one in that service regiment. Mm. That is. And that's Caroline. it on the chat. Sorry, it's Guy Greaves here. Sorry, I had no idea how to put up a little um, um, a message. It says, forgive me for talking direct, but um, can I suggest to Claire that um, the problem of the timeline so far is that it's very particular and could be considered um, uh, not inclusive. And we've had already names like Ivor Gilliatt. Paul Croson and others who were infamous at their time in the 50s and 60s. And you sweep in your timeline. I know you're still drafting it to date, um, but to Dennis Silk and without mentioning um, whether it was good or bad, the, the, the Wardens, Milligan and others. And I, I think your timeline needs to be comprehensive so people can um, relate to their particular... I was there for the over 75s reunion, was it last month? Can't think. Um, and a lot of people, we, um, as we walked down cover passage said, oh, isn't it bare? Where are all the notice boards? Um, I understand, I, I loved your explanation why all the notice boards are not necessary anymore. Um, which is a shame because it was in my time, 60 to 64, um, the center uh, of school, as you've already alluded to. 
it needs to be somehow related to that uh, reminiscence. I loved your idea of replaceable panels. Um, and if you go back and ask people like me and the other participants in this of favorite memories, oh, there are lots of stories, um, <laughs> but, and, and to replace them in this, that, and other. But please, uh, can I make that suggestion? It's got to be comprehensive. Uh, and are not just the stars of the shows um, uh, of, of the silks and the others, um, but the infamous as well. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'll shut up. I think Hugh has a hand up as well. Do you want to unmute Hugh? Hugh, can you unmute? Yes, it takes me a few seconds to get right. the hang of this thing, but now you can hear me. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you very much, uh, Claire and Carolyn, for this excellent uh, performance and uh, running through. Uh, Claire was very clear, and, and Carolyn speaks a little too fast for some of us. You need to slow down a bit. I'm an ex-radio broadcaster, but do please have another go at this and give us another part of the school. I suggest that the old school's building, I think it's now called the Morgan Library or something, but I have great memories of that uh, as a classroom in the 1950s. And perhaps you could give a historical uh, perspective on this at some date in the future and give us plenty of notice. Thank you and goodbye. Yes, it's, 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 it's not the end yet. <laughs> We have one last thing which was uh, contributed to us. Um, so I'm going to stop share just for a moment. Oh, come on. No sound. Okay, while Claire's doing that, I'll just come back on the timeline point. Um, it is incredibly difficult to get every single thing on the timeline. So, and we're naturally, I think, as you, naturally going to ha have to leave some things out and not everyone's going to be happy. You can imagine it, it could potentially be a slightly contentious thing, uh, which is why we want it to be an evolving thing so that it can it, it be added to over time. Um, because I just, I, we physically cannot get every single thing and every single individual on there but i appreciate your point about getting a balance of people who are yes the stars of the show but then also perhaps people who are a little bit more overlooked or not as well known but who are still absolutely central um to radley's history so so that's the route we're going um and um fully take that on board there's going to be a lot on there i think it will start the conversation going and then going forward so we can update some of those panel and add, add new things on so kind of like a living breathing thing um i think that ultimately it will shift over time and i think that's the right thing otherwise as claire said it earlier people just stop looking so um that's the plan right so we were We were sent this, and I hope that it's going to work for us. Come on. No, it's not working. Was it? Okay. This is a video that, that has been shared with us. So it might be slightly jittery just because it's um, it's playing through all of your internet connections, but um, it's quite a nice little clip with a lot of atmosphere. So, 
then we can share. Hugh, did you want to say something while we're just getting the tech working? Uh, you're on mute, so just if you just pop that button again. Uh, I can't hear you yet. I think I've completely lost him now. Hugh, are you still with us? Mm -hmm. So did that come through? You you have a go. You have a go at sharing it. Thanks all. I must go. But thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Claire. Fascinating. Thank you, Guy. Well, we can. <laughs> no, we've, we've had a technology fail here. Uh, we were sent by Jamie Walker, uh, a film that he made as part of Genesis 96, um, filming in Covered Passage. Obviously, if you want to make a spooky film, you want to make it on Covered Passage. Jamie, Jamie Campbell? Campbell, yeah. Sorry. Um, so we have a suggestion there from Hugh that we do a similar thing about old school. Um, I would suggest that we could also do something um, around the old gym site, which is something which has changed a great deal. So yes, um, if this kind of um, talk, uh, just chat and um, people's ideas and reminiscences is, is useful to you, then um, come back to us and let us know what you'd like. I'm going to hand over to Caroline. Now. Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate, um, thank everybody for coming and also to thank you, Claire, um, that was incredibly interesting. Uh, I particularly enjoyed also hearing all the stories and reminiscences and memories from the guests too, so that's uh, brilliant. Um, before you go, just wanted to remind you of our anniversary, 175th anniversary book, Untold Stories, Claire referred to it earlier. It explores the history of Radley through Sewell and Singleton's original founding principles. This is still for sale and would make an ideal Christmas present. So please do get in touch with Radsock if you want to purchase that um, in any time soon. So um, all that remains to say is thanks for attending. We hope that you found today useful and interesting and we'll be in touch with further information by email about the next event. But thank you very much. Lovely to see you all.